Joining us now in our Lega studio to shed more light on this matter, as well as Tami Kalio, a political affairs analyst. Good to have you join us, Tami. Now, yeah, you sure. heard that report. Now, the government of the day says it has credible evidence to back up its outcry that the opposition is planning to sabotage President Mohamed Buhari's administration, overheat the polity, and make the country ungovernable. But one of the biggest questions we've had so far from different interactions is the fact that if the government of the day say they have this evidence, why are we not having investigation publicized? Why aren't we having arrest? Why haven't, why haven't we had any prosecution? And yet they say they have all of the evidences. But let me share with you now this um, quote. Now, our interventions are based on credible evidence and no government with this kind of evidence we have of plans to subvert the power of the state, attack the nation's economic life, why and generally unleash mayhem on the polity will keep quiet. And in not keeping quiet, we should see the evidences, exactly. don't you think? I do think so. But then again, let's not forget that this is the Minister of Information, right? So as Minister of Information, is privy to a lot of information that we regular people are not. We understand confidential, press. but if they have all of these evidences, at least we should have some convincing information beyond all this talk. All right, so actually we've had, um, we just finished very, very rough elections that involved two major parties. There's been a lot of backlash going at each other's throats. So I feel that there's a possibility that the reason the government may not be going forward with this um, investigations and to reveal evidence is because they're trying to ensure that we heal as a nation. Usually after elections, you have countries coming together. The winning party comes together to try to heal the nation so that they forget all of the scars that were opened up during the election process. But notwithstanding, I feel that we should not totally disregard this information. While he's not moving forward with it, I have no idea why he's doing that. But I feel that he's Minister of Information and he's privy to a lot of information that we are not. He receives security briefings and all these different things that come to him all of the time. So mm. usually where there's smoke, there's fire. That's all of these reports that we've had from the DSS, the army, the police, exactly. they are not necessarily new to us. Yes. And these same allegations of um, colluding and coming together to sabotage the efforts of the government of the day, looking at even good luck, Jonathan, um, time is administration these same allegations were made so is this what always happens when we have the opposition and then the government of the day always pointing this blaming finger really yes usually for political um, battles like this you always have back and forth movements between political parties we haven't like we've we've begun to experience this more often because now we have so there's just it, a trend it's more like a trend but i'm saying that we should not outrightly disregard it because mm -hmm. it's the Minister of Information talking. You talk and these about, are strong mm -hmm. allegations mm -hmm. here. So. You talk about not disregarding this message now, but we've not necessarily had any response from the PDP as well. That's the main opposition that the government of today is pointing exactly. out. So do you think we'll have any soon? Well, the PDP any has said, the PDP has responded in some articles that I read from um, Vanga. But said, not necessarily, clearly, to all of these clearly. They only said that the, um, the APC government should go ahead and publish the evidence if they have any. So... It, regardless of the whole thing, I feel that they are going to publish evidence if they have enough. I feel that this is this is my suggestion, right? So, if the Minister of Information of a country has said that this is like there's the political party and the former and the presidential candidate is trying to cause um, political mayhem and usurp the government and all of that, I feel that. The job of the media and the press is to do more investigative analysis, more investigative journalism, to try to get into this this evidence that he talks about. Right? Okay, for yeah. the lack of time now, it's 10 days to go. Today's uh, the 19th and we just have 10 days to go to the inauguration of Mr. President for his next term of four years. But to what extent now do you expect the government to ensure that we have a smooth transition, not necessarily a transition, but it's smooth yeah. inauguration in terms of security and we don't have any meltdown. We can't be taken by any surprises if we have all of these um, uh, flags being raised now. Exactly. So um, all of these claims, I feel that the government should just ensure that the security agencies are always at their top game. They are alert and they are everywhere they're supposed to be to ensure that there's no violence, threats or anything around the corner. They also try to supposed to make sure that we heal. They're supposed to bring out messages of peace and not point fingers at one another. Right? Okay. So Thank you very much for your point. time. It's been a pleasure speaking with Thank you, Thank you very Tom. much for having me. No.